Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. In this video we are going to take a look on the analysis and modeling of reinforced concrete circular tank and we are talking about non pre-test reinforced concrete circular tanks. Now before I start I highly suggest that you check out the circular concrete tanks without pre-stressing guide published by the Portland Cement Association, PCA. This is an extremely old uh, reference, but will help you understand the different terms and topics covering the design of reinforced concrete circular tanks. As for this video, I'll be only talking about the modeling of those circular tanks. So to start with, I'm going to click on 3D building design. And let's say, let's assume some assumptions. Now my circular tank is not going to be a large one, I'm going to assume that my circular tank's diameter is 20 meters. So basically, first of all, I'm going to go to view to have me a nice 3D view of my model. So to define my circular water tank, I'm going to go to geometry first of all and define the shape of the water tank by going to object and selecting cylinder. Now my cylinder can be drawn using three points or it can be drawn using center radius. If you draw using center radius, then you have to apply and uh, input the center point, which is going to be my 0, 0, 0, the radius, which is going to be 10 meters, because I want a 20 meter diameter uh, tank, and my height, I don't know, I might make it like 7 meters or something. Of course, the plane that you are drawing in is on the XY, meaning that the cross-section is parallel to the XY, and you can see that you start getting the outline of, when you move, you can start getting the outline of the tank. Now, what Autodesk Robot does when it draws a cylinder, it does not only draw the side walls, it also draws the top and the bottom of the cylinder, and there is the ability to divide the side. So, first of all, I'm going just to apply, and I will tell you why you shouldn't do that. So, if you apply right now, you can see that Autodesk Robot basically drew you a cylinder, and it has a top and bottom. Now, I know that water tanks have bottoms and have tops, but for now, I will only be focusing on the walls of the water tank. And I want you to read the Portland Cement Association reference I have mentioned at the beginning uh, to get used to uh, the different aspects of designing and modeling those tanks. For now, I will only be focusing on the walls of the tank. So doing this is obviously wrong. And if I want to even continue doing this one, you can basically fix the edge like this because I don't want to support it on the bottom, I want to support it only on the walls. You can, and I will do this in the future, you can support the uh, water tank on its bottom by applying something called a soil elasticity, meaning that you're applying or assuming that the bottom is su supported by a soil of a given elasticity. But still, I want to tell you why this is wrong, so if you run the analysis now, it, well, it will not actually work perfectly because you can see that it discretizes for you the top, which is the uh, cover, and the bottom, which we don't need, and also the walls. So it's not really what I want, because I don't want to model the top and bottom of those, uh, of those surfaces. Also, nobody has inputted the thickness of the, of the surface. You can change that, but at least it's like I just made a dry run, and well, that's what I got. Of course, I don't want this, I want only to have my sidewalls, so what did we do wrong? Well, what we did do wrong is when we defined our objects, we went to geometry objects, you go to cylinder, we kept the top and bottom or the top and base uh, clicked. Now, this time I don't want any top and I don't want any base, so I'm going to do a zero, zero, 0, as in center, radius, zero, zero, 0, then radius 10, height 7, I think, and this time I am not going to have any top or base. Now, you can even improve the circle, uh, the model, by discretizing the circle you get. Now, if you discretize the circle, Autodesk Robot will actually approximate the circle for you. Of course, you can fix that by increasing the discretization. So, you can delete that, basically, and once again, try again. Of course, I need to delete everything right now. So, geometry, objects, cylinder. And this time, you can improve upon your discretization by saying, for example, 100. Uh, discrete discret elements. So, for example, if you go to radius, uh, it's 10 once again, height 7, and you can improve this by basically saying circle discretization instead of 10, 100, or even can make an edge length 1 meter, and then discretize it into 1 meter 
pieces. Now, this is something I will leave for you. You can see those little elements that are discretized. So sometimes it's absolutely necessary to discretize, and sometimes it isn't. So for now, I will just let Autodesk Robot discretize everything for me. So I'll go to Geometry, Object, Cylinder, and for the last time, I will this time define it correctly. So 0, 0, 0, radius 10, height 7, no base, no top, and I'll apply. So now it just assumed me a circular wall. Of course, I'm going to fix that wall because I'm going to assume that the connection between the wall and the ground is fixed. Of course, you can fine-tune your model by modeling the base and applying an elastic stiffness of the soil or elastic foundation. And then the support of the wall is going to be a rigid joint with the base. And of course, the base is supported on the ground. But this is for another video. So now I have my water tank. And of course, I need to double check my uh, thickness. So I'll go to thicknesses and define me a new thickness. And this is where the fun starts. You see, the thickness of a water tank, according to the Portland Cement Association, is not only based on the economical needs and the reinforcement needs, but is also based on the crack control. Because water tank or even liquid tanks usually retain liquids, so your thickness of the wall should be so much so it resists not only uh, it, it helps not only in resisting moments, but also resists all kinds of tension stresses that might arise from shrinkage, from uh, creep, from temperature, from all kinds of stuff. Also, and now this is why I told you you should read the PCA manual, uh, there are a lot of limitations with regard to the spacing of reinforcement that you can use in water tanks because you want to capture and limit cracks. Uh, regardless, for me, I will not be diving into the PCA. This is something I will leave for you. I will consider this as 300, not have parameters of foundation elasticity, and I will have a 300 millimeter thickness uh, wall. So if you add that, now you have this thickness here. You can click it and you can apply it on the walls. Of course, I'm applying it on the side wall, and now I am almost ready. You want to double check it, you click and you select basically the side wall. And you can see here down that there is uh, the thickness 300 that is available. All right, so the last thing I have to do before I finish is to apply me some hydrostatic pressure. Now, please notice that there are two, that there are three cases for those water tanks. Case number one, the water tank is on the ground. If the water tank is on the ground, then all you have to do is to model the hydrostatic pressure and maybe deal with the wind loads if it's severe but it's on the ground, so I don't think that, but you have to deal with the wind pressures on the walls. This is if the water tank is on the ground. If the water tank is elevated, then of course you have to model the, the entire structure, which is something I will do in the future, and you have to take the wind load into account because an elevated water tank will have more uh, wind loads than a on ground water tank. And finally, if this water tank is beneath the soil, meaning that you have soil on each side, then you would have to include geotechnical uh, forces into account. Now, as a matter of fact, I will do it right now. So I have dead load, and I'll apply me another case dead load for geotechnical. Now, if the water tank is uh, buried, then there must be also some live load because people are walking around the water tank and will cause live load. Now, this was mentioned in a different video talking about modeling swimming pools, and the link is above. So to continue, I will not be doing a live load, but of course I've explained that before, so take a look on that video if you want to see more details about live loads. And I'll just hit the OK button now. Now, uh, for the hydrostatic pressure, remember here my point is not to design, my point is to model. For the hydrostatic pressure, I will make me a different load combination, just in case to take into account any design code that traits dead load different than hydrostatic pressure, different than geotechnical. Reason being, because I'm not designing, so I want to respect all the codes that are out there. So for the first case, it's a dead load, I will just leave the self-weight in it. For the second case, it's the uh, hydrostatic pressure. So I'll go to surface, go to hydrostatic pressure, and apply me a pressure. Now this water tank is, I'm assuming that the surface of the water tank is subjected to the atmospheric pressure, so there is no pressure difference. Uh, let's say that it stores, I don't know, water of some sorts. So I just say 1050 because I want to take into account the impurities of water. And the water level, let's say it's 7 meters. So it's r filled to the rim. And if you click add, 
and basically select your walls like this by simply selecting that and click apply button you can see that the water pressure has been applied and if you open the load you can see that the water pressure is applied it might not be 100% obvious but you can see from the side here that there is water pressure applied this is for water pressure now if you go to the dead load case 3 you can apply geotechnical loads by going and this was explained before in a video about retaining walls too and the link is also above so you go to basically loads then you go to special loads soil pressure now we define our soil pressure by going to parameters and of course we need to start thinking about this now first of all our tank isn't moving anywhere because it's applied the pressure is applied in all directions in all possible directions so the water tank is not moving meaning it's at rest now let's say we have a clay sign at a sand at a level of seven meters and uh, it's at rest so k is zero k zero now we have our seven meters you go to results you can see the results you apply and then you select your object which is going to be this one you hit the apply and then you can see that you have soil pressure applied on your structure fantastic so i have all my load cases all i have to do now is to run the analysis and double check my results so if you run the analysis now um, it shouldn't have any problem hopefully uh, okay yeah fine there is a small error that there are some elements defined outside stories the reason being the story height is at three meters whereas my tank is at six meters so it actually tells you there's a problem if you double click on that you can see that some elements are defined outside of stories you can fix that if you want it's not a big issue by deleting the story like this and applying a story with a top level of six meters uh, seven meters sorry because my tank is seven meters so if I apply that, click yes, okay, then the problem just disappears. Fantastic. Now we need to understand those results. Now first of all, to understand those results, you need to see your local directions. You go like this, you see that the Y is a circumferential direction, and the X is a vertical direction, meaning that any moment around Y is going to be uh, your circumferential moment, <coughs> which is going to uh, basically control the amount of steel you will have in the horizontal direction. And your moment in X is going to be your vertical moment, which will control the amount of steel you will have in the vertical direction. So if you go to results, maps, and select MYY, you can see that your moments, as in kilonewton meter per meter, is 18, which is not really much. You can see that you have moments near the discontinuities, because you have a fixed support here. So there are some discontinuities in the model, and it's not a big deal, actually. And also you have a strange moment here near the connection of the two plates because of inaccuracies in the finite element method. But you can see that for the rest of the element, if you say with FE, with descriptions, you can see that the values are actually very small, like 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1. It's not a big deal. Only here, because of some limitations of the finite element method, you can see that there are some differences here. If you are interested in understanding what smoothing is, leave a comment, I'd explain that this is embedded deep in the finite element. For those of you who really want to know right now, just a small hint, notice that the finite element relies on numerical integration, Gaussian quadrature, and when you, uh, when you evaluate the values of each finite element, you use Gauss quadrature again, and the values for each element at the same point might be not equal. So the idea here is that you smoothen and calculate the average at those nodes. Fantastic. So if you go to MXX, this is where the font starts because now we will see a significant moment. You can see 60 now instead of 3. And this makes sense because if you click on the deflection shape, you can see that the tank bulges. Now, of course, I have it running on the soil pressure, but if you go to the actual water, you can see that the water tank bulges outside, as you can see here. Playing with the scales, you can see that the water tank bulges outside when you have fluid inside it exactly as we are expecting this to be fantastic so this is how you analyze a water tank and of course you will have to design it yourself uh, based on the code that you have if you're interested in a design video feel free to mention that in the comments uh, but for now i will just stop this right now i want to very quickly uh, model me a domed tank so i'll repeat my steps very quickly i go to object cylinder and this time I want to make a center radius uh, cylinder. My point is P000, my radius is uh, 10, and my height I think was 7, 
and there is no top, there is no bottom, and I want to discretize my circle into 30 pieces. And this time I'm memorizing the number 30 because I will use it in a moment. Now, first of all, I am going to fix my wall, basically, and then I will now do me a dome. Now, to do a dome, you, there is no dome command to this robot. However, there is an arc command. So I go to geometry, objects, arc, and now I'm going to draw an arc. Now, the dome is not a perfectly circular dome. There are circular domes, but this is just an approximate dome, so I'm going to try eyeball it, basically. So I want to draw an arc, beginning and middle. Of course, your modeling should be more accurate than me. You should know exactly what the curvature of the dome is. For me, I just click the beginning, click the end, and basically eyeball me an arc like this. It might not be a perfect arc. I know, I mean, look, this is a little bit more, but uh, that's not the point. My point is just to draw the arc. Okay, now the final thing to, to model a dome is to take the arc like this, select it, then go to Geometry, Objects, Revolve. Now you are going to revolve your arc around an axis. The axis is from here to here to the 0, 0, 0. You are going to revolve it 360 degrees and you are going to discretize it into 30, the exact number of discretizations that you have discretized your wall. Because you want your dome to connect with your wall at the exact same positions. So if you click on apply now, you will have a perfect dome. Now, I didn't put any loads. I only let the self width run. So I run the analysis, hoping for the best. Now, it will tell you separate structures, but that's not a big deal. It's going to be okay. It took some time, I know. It's a big structure. You have a domed water tank. I will be talking about domes in other videos soon. But for now, that's all what I wanted to talk about. How to model circular things in robots, circular tanks in robots, and apply some loads. And also how to make a ceiling on the circular tank out of a dome. You can see the deflection shape, it's lovely. You can see that the dome deflects exactly as it should be. That's it. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting, especially subscribing because it increases the reach of my channel. As usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we will catch you in the next video.